I'm excited because today we're going to be comparing the MacBook Pro 16 to the latest next generation Windows laptops. Yes, we're talking the latest PCs in the form of this Gigabyte Aero. So we're talking about the best Apple offer the MacBook Pro 16 with the most powerful graphics it has. An i9 versus the latest generation PC parts, the 10th generation CPUs, the RTX Supers. Which one's going to come out on top? Well, let's find out. Let me tell you something, you're going to want to subscribe, trust me, because later on this week, I will be adding to the comparison the latest AMD powered laptops. Yes, I'm talking about the AMD 4900HS in the G14 laptop. So we're going to truly know which is the content creation king. And I'm really excited for this because I have no idea which one will be better. So we're really going to find out which is the best content creation laptop in 2020. We're talking about After Effects, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci. I even got some final cut in here. And I also will test this Gigabyte Aero for audio latency. So DPC latency, which Windows sometimes suffer with. So all you music people out there, you do the call. You're going to know if this is any good for music. We already know that the Mac is. And not to forget 3D performance as well. So let's crack on with it. On the left, the MacBook Pro has the 9th generation i9-9980HK, 32GB of RAM at 2666 and an 8GB AMD Radeon Pro 5500M, so it's pretty much as good as it gets with the Mac. On the right hand side you have the Gigabyte Aero, which will probably be the best studio laptop, and if you don't know what a studio laptop is, it's a laptop certified by Nvidia for content creation. So it's not targeted for gamers, it's made for content creation. It is a studio laptop. It comes with Intel's latest 10875H processor. So it's eight cores, just like the MacBook Pro 16, but it's the latest 10th generation CPUs. Now the MacBook Pros later in the year will get these 10th generation CPUs. That's one thing to bear in mind. We also have the RTX 2070 Super Max-Q. This is Nvidia's latest graphics and we have 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 MHz. Now the only test I've done where RAM becomes an issue is After Effects, but as you'll see later, PCs are just better for After Effects anyway. Let's talk about the displays quickly and you can see the difference straight away, right? OLED pop on the Aero 15. It just blows your eyeballs out, super saturated, just pop, contrast. It is a 16 by 9 display, 100% P3, just like the MacBook Pro screen. So they both have that super wide color gamut. This one comes in at around 430 nits of brightness compared to the MacBook Pro I have that has over 500 nits brightness, about 523 nits. So the big difference is the MacBook Pro is LED technology, the Gigabyte Aero is OLED. Also, the MacBook Pro is a big 16 inch display and it's 16 by 10, so it is massive that display. 16 by 10 is better for content creation, 100%, there's no doubt there. But the Gigabyte Aero is also a gaming laptop too, so 16 by 9 makes sense. That is the industry standard for gaming. But they're both big, beautiful displays, both super color accurate, both of them are amazing color accuracy. You know, when I had the choice between OLED and LED, I chose the LED, but I don't even know if I made the right choice. Good luck choosing between the two, because they're both fantastic displays. I will say that the Mac controls the glare a little bit better than the Gigabyte, but please let me know in the comments which one you would go for. Now let's get into 3D. If we just look at the surface, the power difference between these GPUs, I don't even have to tell you which one's the Gigabyte Aero. Yes, it's the big score. And this is OpenCL test, Luxmark. That shows you how much more power the RTX 2070 Super has. But that doesn't mean nothing in the real world, as you'll see later on. And you have to note too, that the MacBook Pro is a 96 watt package and the Aero is a 230 watt package. So over double the amount of power you need for the Gigabyte Aero. So this does affect things like when you unplug the Mac it performs exactly like it does on power, whereas the Gigabyte Aero does not. Significant drop in performance then. But there's no doubting, you can see here, the GPU is much more powerful. Now let's get into the real world though. Now this benchmark here is run through a suite of 3D applications. So let's pick out a few. We look at the top, 3D Studio Max. You can see the Gigabyte Aero on the left. It is much faster than the Radeon Pro. 
5500M on the MacBook Pro. So 3D Studio Max does like powerful graphics cards, but go right down to the bottom where it says SolidWorks. And what you can see for SolidWorks is the MacBook Pro is much faster than the Aero. And this is all down to drivers. You don't have Quadro drivers for the Aero, but you have professional drivers for the MacBook Pro. So that's why it's faster in SolidWorks. And then if we look in the middle there in Maya, you can see that even though the graphics card is more powerful on the Aero, it's not that much faster in Maya than the MacBook Pro. So for 3D applications, they're both great. You're just gonna have to check what application you use. Now let's get into After Effects. And so I run the Pugin System After Effects benchmark. And by the way, please download Pugin System benchmarks and let's get some benchmarks up there because now all the results go to Pugin and now we can actually search results, which is really good. So if we look on the arrow on the left, it has a score of 776 versus 694 on the MacBook Pro. Now you might think, what the hell does that mean? But you can see it's broken down into GPU, RAM preview, render score, and tracking score. So you can see in that score breakdown that the Aero wins in all these departments. Now I'll leave a link in the description to these results so you can go through all the different projects and all the different results. But it should be no surprise, After Effects loves PCs and it loves the power of the Aero here. But the Mac is still competitive. It's still good for After Effects and it's got a great tracking score there. And not too long ago, Max was sort of like unusable for After Effects. Now they're a lot better. Now let's look at Photoshop. And what you can see here is the Mac on the right has a higher score of 764. Very close between the two. They're both great for Photoshop. I guess where the Mac gets the big win is in the filter score. And of course the Aero gets a higher GPU score. But both will be amazing for Photoshop. You just gotta work out what you use for Photoshop. Do you use all the filters? what kind of display you like, etc. But they're both gonna be great for Photoshop. And it's interesting to see that they're so close here. Now let's just have a quick look at the CPUs. I use the Gigabyte Aero in gaming mode with the power set on high performance. Now I would not use it in this mode because it's too loud for me. I would use it in normal, but I thought I'd put it in maximum performance mode. Now you can unlock the power limit of the Gigabyte Aero and get more performance, but as it stands, both these CPUs perform pretty much the same because they have the same sort of wattage limit. The Aero in stock form is limited to 62 watts on a CPU. This MacBook Pro will sustain about that, 62, 64 watts. So very similar CPU performance. You can see it in the CPU benchmarks here. There's nothing between them in Cinebench. But the Mac is actually faster in single core. It's actually 465 versus 457, which really surprised me because the 10th generation CPUs are supposed to do 5.1 gigahertz. Well, at least the one in the Aero is supposed to, but it seems like the Mac can get the single core speed up higher. It just may be a Mac OS versus Windows sort of thing. But both good performances on the CPU here, but when you see me compare the AMD CPU to these later in the week, you're gonna see there's a big difference. So do not forget to subscribe for that. Now for Lightroom, unfortunately I can't run the Puget System benchmark on a Mac for Lightroom. But I've done an export test, as you can see here, virtually no difference. The arrow is a touch faster, but remember it's using a 10th generation CPU, so it should be faster, but really there's not that much different exporting in Lightroom. Now actually using Lightroom on both of them, I cannot tell the difference between the two, using the brushes and editing and stuff. So yeah, there's really no difference in Lightroom. They're both great for Lightroom. Now when it comes to audio, like music production, if we're just talking about DPC latency, the Macs don't have an issue with DPC. PC latency, but they do have a T2 chip which can play up with audio interfaces. Like it's a common problem. You're just gonna have to look into what audio interface you're gonna use with your Mac. Now, usually a lot of PCs suffer DPC latency, but this Gigabyte Aero does not. Check this out. Right, so what you're looking at here is me recording directly into the Aero 15 and look at that DPC latency. Baby, baby, baby. Yes, the best I've ever seen on Windows ever. I will say here. With the Mac, you're not gonna have any issues with your DPC latency or anything like that. Now, whether the audio interface will drop out because of the T2 chip, that's another story. And you might wanna check out what uh, audio interface works with your Mac, because my beloved one does not work with the Mac very well. It drops out every now and then. The T2 chip is an issue with some audio interfaces. This thing here, best DPC latency I've had on any sort of Windows machine. This is just amazing. Like the Razer was probably the best for DPC latency before. This one is now. So whatever they've done with the chipset or whatever, 
Good job, Gigabyte. Now, there is one thing about the Aero, though. Even in silent mode, the fans would come on every now and then. So come on, Gigabyte, you've got to fix that. Whereas the Mac, unless you're loading a heap of plugins, like in real time or something like that, you're not going to hear the fans on the Mac if you're recording into it. So both of them ace for audio. Just watch out for the fan noise with the Aero. Now let's get into the most important thing to me at least, video editing. And I ran a million tests. Before I get onto Premiere, and I did do a couple of tests in Final Cut Pro, I just want to show you here in DaVinci Resolve how it will perform with 8K, and that's 12 to 1 compression. You can see there, it's interesting, right? Right. The MacBook Pro on the right is better with CPU. I don't understand why. Same wattage limit. Maybe it's single threaded. I don't know. And you'd think the 10th generation CPUs would be better, but DaVinci, it seems not. But look at the GPU scores there. You can see the power of the RTX 2070 Super is going to be much better for DaVinci Resolve, certainly in playback. Exporting, go see Sarah DiPicci's video. She actually had some interesting results where the Mac was better. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Now, when it comes to 4K, same sort of story here. They're going to do 4K, no problems, both of them. So in Resolve, they're both good, but obviously with the Gigabyte Aero, you do have the beefier graphic. So Resolve is really good at utilizing the graphics. So no surprises there. But when it comes to Premiere, whew, that's a big difference. First, we'll look at 8K in Premiere Pro. This is Red Raw footage. All right, so this is Red Raw 8K footage. First thing I want you to notice is the extra room you have for more tracks in Premiere Pro. Don't worry about the color difference between the displays. This has True Tone on. Let's play back 8K Red Raw footage. Let's play back on that one, sorry. Um, all right, so this is playing back the Red Raw footage there. And we'll see how many frames we've dropped. As you can see here, what do we got? We have 336 frames dropped, 378 frames dropped. So a little bit less on this. So I exported that 8K red footage, ProRes 422, and the Aero done it in one minute and 15 seconds. The MacBook Pro done it in two minutes and 11 seconds. Now that was a little bit strange to me because I'm thinking ProRes, it's an Apple thing. Maybe it should export faster with the MacBook Pro. So I did throw it into Final Cut and yes indeed it did export it faster than the Aero once I put it into Final Cut. Now in Premiere and Final Cut, export into ProRes from RED, it was using the GPU. So that gives you an idea of why it's faster than the Aero, but it was using the GPU in Premiere Pro as well and it was slower. Now with the Aero, it actually used the CPU. Now let's go into the most interesting thing to me. 6K H.265 footage from my Panasonic S1H and this really surprised me. The Gigabyte Aero could not play it back at all. Not even raw, straight out of the camera. I'm not talking with a lot applied color correction. It just would not play it at all. Okay, now let's get into the 6K content that this Ultrabook can play. The MacBook Pro plays no problem even with LUT and color correction. Let's see if we can play it here at full. Dropping frames already. Uh, yeah, it's because it's using Intel GPU and this Ultrabook has the, you know, the Iris Plus Intel GPU and this one doesn't. This has Intel HD and it can't play it. It just drops frames. It will eventually drop frames. There you go. And so that means no color correction. You can't put it on there and play it because you can't even play it raw. It would drop frames actually, 326 frames to be precise. But with the MacBook Pro, this 6K footage, it would not only play it back raw straight out of the camera, it would play it back with LUT applied and color correction. So this 6K H.265 on the Mac can play it at full with the color correction, LUT and everything. And the Aero couldn't play it just straight out of the camera. This blew my mind a little bit. I'm trying to figure out why is this happening? And it's bad news for me because it's going to be like this with all Windows laptops in Premiere at the moment, the way it runs now. Because in Premiere, this 6K footage was using the Intel HD graphics to decode. So when you press the space bar and play, it's using Intel HD graphics. Whereas on the Mac, with the latest update, wasn't like this before, but with the latest update, it uses the GPU. So it can play back that 6K footage, no problems whatsoever, no frames dropped at all. So if you're dealing with H.265, clearly the Mac is the better system at the moment in Premiere. Now to add insult to injury, an XPS 13 2-in-1 with a quad-core Ice Lake CPU mobile part 15 watt and a Lenovo C940 with, again, an Ultrabook 15-watt quad-core CPU 
can play back this 6K footage at full. And that's because it does, again, use the Intel HD, but the Iris Plus graphics in Ice Lake is much faster than the Intel HD graphics in these temp generation 45 watt parts that go into the Windows laptop. So yeah, that's really disappointing for me. It's not Gigabyte's fault. That's just Premiere. They've got to start using the GPU for this. And this poor performance trend continues with H.265 or HEVC when it comes to exporting too, because you export with the Gigabyte Aero, this 6K footage, the 4K HEVC, and it took two minutes and eight on the Aero. MacBook Pro and Premiere Pro took a minute and 39 seconds. And in Final Cut Pro, it took a minute and 25 seconds. So if you're working with H.265 and you're using Premiere, don't buy a PC. <laughs> you might want to get a Mac at the moment. So I have said before in the past that the MacBook Pro 16 is the scrubbing king in the timeline, especially in Premiere Pro, at least in Premiere Pro, should I say. Now, it does scrub like a beast. Now, someone actually told me it's because of the SSD speed. Well, I'm running this project now off a T5, so it's got nothing to do with an SSD speed. And this is 4K footage, okay? So if we go there, I'll turn off the color correction, which is this one. You see the massive difference there. This is 4K at full with LUT applied color correction and have a look at the Scrub Master. Nothing scrubs like this. And also you have that smooth trackpad that it's just, it feels connected and it feels like butter. It's just, it's just amazing scrubbing. All right, so now let's try the scrubbing on this Aero 15 and straight away the trackpad isn't as good, but you can see there, it's not as smooth, is it? There's a bit of a, yeah. I mean, the scrubbing's fine. It's one of the best scrubbing Windows laptops I had. But yeah, the combination of the trackpad and just not quite being as smooth. It's just, yeah, not quite as fast as, say, the Mac. But it is good. Now, before I get into my famous 4K sample project, which I test pretty much every laptop on, exporting H.264 to H.264 YouTube preset, I just want to mention that you can add an eGPU to the Mac and get better performance. If it's H.264 and H.265 in Final Cut, an eGPU doesn't make that much difference. But for other Kodaks, it does. But certainly in Premiere, for most of the things that use the GPU, you can get a boost in performance using an eGPU. Now, if you put an eGPU on the arrow, makes no difference. 2080 Ti slows it down. And you have the bottleneck of Thunderbolt. Once you take that bottleneck out, the internal graphics is faster. So you can get a boost with the MacBook Pro with an eGPU, which makes things quieter. Now, of course, if you're doing a lot of GPU heavy effects, the Aero is gonna be king. The RTX 2070 and CUDA is just gonna kill it when it's used. But as you can see in real world, let's look at my famous sample project. It's not gonna make that much difference in Premiere at least. Now the Gigabyte Aero is on top here when we're talking software rendering, which is on the right. If we look in the brackets for hardware encoding, you can see that the MacBook Pro is faster. Now most people will use hardware encoding. I've always sort of been a little bit old school and used to use software encoding. These days I use hardware encoding, so maybe I should flip those scores around now. But it looks like a bit of 10th generation magic there in software encoding, the Gigabyte Aero is superior. Hardware encoding, even if you run through the list there, there's much less powerful laptops that in rendering, are you gonna notice that much difference? All these 15 inch laptops are gonna play back 4K footage, no problems. So very interesting. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Conclusion, what is the conclusion? What is the best for content creation? Well, first you gotta choose which screen you like better. Second, what are you using it for? Are you using After Effects? Get the Gigabyte. Are you using DaVinci? And they're both good for 8K in DaVinci as well. When it comes to Premiere Pro, it's not that much difference between the two. There certainly is a difference with H.265 and Premiere. The Mac is clearly superior here, not because it's faster, just the way it's optimized to use the GPU. And even if we're just talking hardware encoding, it's still faster than the Aero. So it just shows you, you don't need the most powerful graphics card for, you know, Premiere. It really doesn't utilize it that much. Now, that was a lot of work. I wanna know which one you would go for Stay tuned for the comparison with the AMD as well. That's coming at the end of the week. I really want to see how fast these Ryzen CPUs are in content creation because they kill it in Cinebench, but in real world, are they better? We'll find out. Can't wait to do that. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you stuck around to the end, give me a thumbs up. You're a champion for staying around this long. Wolf, 
I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.